In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how you can create these fun patterns using an Ebru marbling technique without having to buy a marbling kit. So stick around, that's coming up next. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Art with Jay Monteith. This week I'm really excited to be able to bring to you a video on a popular technique called Ebru marbling. Except the only difference is I'm going to be sharing with you my technique where you just need to use a couple of household ingredients, some things that you'll have already around your home, instead of having to buy an actual marbling kit. These are great very pretty and you can create all kinds of things with them such as cards and other forms of art. So without further ado, let's get started and I'll share with you all the things you need for this week's project. Okay, so I have all of the items that you need to create this week's project laid out in front of me and I'll just go over these quickly before we begin. I'll also, also I'll leave a link below in the description box if you want to purchase any of these items. Uh, through my Amazon shop it'll take you right there and now all you need to do is search for the project itself so you don't have to search randomly this will be under the Ebru marbling project uh, so it'll take you directly to that and everything you see here will be in that link so if you want to buy anything you can otherwise you can pick these up at most of your art supply stores or your local uh, supply store like Walmart or anything something like that very first item that you need is a dish of some sort. This is uh, to hold the size, and the size is actually another word for the liquid. So it can be, you know, really anything, as long as it has enough room for a couple of inches uh, to cover the surface or the bottom of the pan, as well as enough room for the uh, size of the paper that you want to fit into the pan itself. So a glass square container is what I'm using this week. As for tools, you will need a couple of paintbrushes, depending on how many paints or paint colors you're going to be using. And I'm going to be using round brushes. These work the best for this particular technique. I have a couple of number nines and a number four. So you need several of these. As well, you need a tool for actually uh, doing the intricate detailing on top of the liquid into the paint. So you either need a marbling tool of some sort, or in this case, I'm actually using a long pointed tool from my quilled creation set. I did a quilling and resin project here also on YouTube and I used that tool. So this is going to come in handy for this week's project. So something like that, you don't have to use this. You could use a toothpick or a comb or something like that. All right, as for paints, I'm using the Golden High Flow Acrylics. These work really, really well for this particular application because of the fact that they are indeed high flow, as the name indicates. So you really don't have to do anything to these ahead of time in order to use them or prepare them. They're ready to go. They're very, very fluid and they spread nicely across the liquid. So I'm going to be using those. However, they are fairly expensive, so if you don't want to pay uh, the cost of these, I, you know, I completely understand, you can opt for something else such as the fluid acrylic. So this is the next level down as far as flow is concerned. You still have to uh, add a little bit of water to these to thin them down just a little bit more, just to get that right consistency. But of course, these are not as expensive as the high flow. And of course, you don't have to use golden. You can use whatever brand you want, but you really need to use a fluid acrylic uh, paint. It works the best and uh, you'll have less work in order to prepare them if you use uh, something like that. So those are the products that you need. As far as the paper is concerned, I have a couple here uh, that I like to use. The first is the Strathmore watercolor paper. And this works really, really well because it's uh, nice and heavy. And these particular artist tiles, they come in several different sizes. So they're already pre-cut for you, ready to go. So it just saves you some time. And this paper holds up nicely in the liquid. So there's that option as well as the Canson Canva paper. I've talked about this paper before. It's also a nice heavy paper with a, a really nice linen texture feel to it. And you can cut that down to whatever size you want. So I have a couple of different uh, types of paper that you can use in this project. 
All right, on to the special or secret ingredients needed to create this amazing technique. And if you know anything about Ebrew marbling, then you'll know that there is a special liquid, or they call it a size, in order to create the intricate details uh, within that paint so that it doesn't go down into the surface at the bottom. And the key main ingredient is carrageenan, and you'll find that in a lot of products, specifically beverage products in your grocery store. So things like almond milk, table cream, whipping cream, and even coffee creamers, things like this. It's an actual stabilizer. It's derived from seaweed, and it's used to create a smooth, creamy consistency, a really nice texture within these products. So that stabilizer is what you need in order to create this marbling effect. And I have found through trial and error that almond milk works the best. It works well when it's just come out of the fridge the cold product in the marbling is the best time to use it. Now, having said that, this particular brand does not contain the carrageenan um, in it. So whatever ingredient they've substituted for, it still works well and does the trick for this particular technique. So if you have these products in your fridge, then you can use one of these or just go to your grocery store and pick one of them up. So that's the main uh, ingredient for the liquid or the base for this particular technique. The other ingredient or product that I'm going to be using is something like dish soap or I've used also Pledge Floor Care. It's just that film that kind of pushes the liquid out and leaves that negative space. So I'm going to be using uh, actually the Floor Care in this case, but you can use dish soap with a little bit of water. And those ingredients combined, we're going to be able to create some really, really nice effects. And then finally, I just wanted to mention one other thing. This is not necessary 100%, but it certainly helps with the transfer onto the paper. And you can prepare whatever substrate you're using to do your transfer to get a better adhesion to that paper. A lot of people will use um, alum. And this is something that you can find in bulk stores um, and even down your grocery aisle, clubhouse or seasonings and spices, things like that will carry it. It'll just say alum on there. And um, it's short for aluminum sulfate really is what it is. And what you can do is mix this with some water and dissolve it in the water. And I've just put mine in a spray bottle. And what you wanna do is spray or dilute um, the, the surface of your paper, you can do both sides in case you forget, and then allow it to dry, and then you have covered it with that al alum or alum aluminum sulfate, so it just adheres better. But again, it's not something completely necessary, you don't have to do it, um, but it's just an, an extra step if you really want that transfer to take well. So all right, I'm gonna clear this off and I'm gonna prepare my liquid in my glass dish and we'll start with our pattern. Okay, I have pulled my almond milk out of the fridge and I'm just going to pour some in here. A couple of inches, move that off to the side. Now you also want to make sure that there's no bubbles in this because when you do the transfer, if there's a bubble underneath then it won't cover that particular area. So you can always just take a paper towel and just pop the bubbles or move them off gently. Okay, the other key thing with this is you want to ensure that this is as still as possible. You don't want this to be moving around when you're working with this technique. Uh, so keeping it very, very steady and still is really what you want. And the key to this particular style of or technique is that you want to be very delicate and very patient. It takes a little bit of patience for this technique for or for any kind of marbling really. And you when you drop your ink or sorry your paint onto the surface, you want to be just very gentle and just put the tip of the brush on top. You don't want to put your brush below the surface or below the size or the liquid. So just take your time and start building your colors. So the very first thing that I do is I will keep one brush just for my dish soap, or in this case, I've just used that fled, um, Pledge Floor Care. And I'm going to be using that the very first step. And you're not going to see the very first one because 
it's clear. And essentially, I'm just going to put it in the center. Just drop it in like that. This will be for this. And then I'm just going to alternate colors. So the predominant color I'm going to start off with. So I'll start with some pink. This is the magenta, the golden high flow. And you really don't need much paint on your brush, very, very little. And again, just gently touch the surface. Now you can alternate colors, and when you put a, the same color on top of the color, it'll just start building and creating more of a saturated effect. Like this. So again, you want to take your time and get now I'll use this liquid soap in between and you'll see how it just pushes it away like that. And this is essentially what you do and you just keep repeating this process until you get to really what you like as far as a design, which at that point you can leave or you can then take your marbling tool and create some more intricate designs. The other thing you should know is that some colors work better than others. The lighter colors tend to work a little bit better. If you're using black, it's got a heavier pigment in it and you need to thin it just a little bit, even the high flow. Uh, so you really have to experiment with colors, but these particular ones, the yellow and the orange and the magenta, they work really, really well. So if you are going to experiment initially, you can get these particular colors and uh, it'll be good. So again, just touching the top of the surface. So I'm going to continue with some rings here till I get to a number of rings that I think are good. And then I will take my marbling tool, we'll move on to the next step of just sort of making some intricate designs in there and then transferring it onto our paper. Okay, I think I have my design almost how I like it here. I've got lots of rings. And if you wanted to leave it like this now, you could and do the transfer. But I am going to just put a few more designs in here. Okay, so with this particular tool, now I can do some swirls or whatever kind of design I would like. That looks pretty good. Really, I just want enough so that I have a square for this piece here. Now, this is the one that I've sprayed and saturated with the alum or aluminum sulfite to dry, and hopefully this will transfer a little bit better than what it would without it. But again, as I mentioned earlier in the video, it's not 100% necessary, but I am going to drop it in an area 
where I want the pattern and you only need it for a couple of seconds. Maybe three to five seconds and then you just lift it off. And there is your transfer. There's one. You can do a couple here. Maybe one more over here. Some swirls. And another one over here. All right, so I have a couple there I'm just going to allow to dry. Now the other thing with this is you can also, and continue on, the other uh, idea is to, once you have this, if you wanna leave it as is, you can also drop some on as well and create a different style, almost like a drop effect directly on if you want more of a random style look. And over here I've done one that has that kind of effect on it. So you really, you just can play around and continue to get some different looks and different designs. This is more of an abstract, random kind of look. And this one, I'll just take some bigger pieces. It's actually an old piece of here. Now, this one will probably have bubbles on it in areas so if you don't have your paper once it's dry and you you've used the alum on it it has to be flat so you might want to low set with an iron just so that it's nice and flat so that when you do put it into the marbling it comes out with a clean transfer without any um, bubbles or air pockets all right so i'm going to continue on and do a few more designs and uh, then I'll move on to the finishing touches with a card and on to my other wood panel. All right, so all of my pattern pieces are finished. I have a few drying here off to the side and some extra ones that I completed earlier. This is more of the abstract, free flowing kind of look and I'm going to continue on to make a card with that. And of course, there's lots of other things that you can do with these pattern pieces, include mounting it to wood panel. As you can see here, I've done that. And if you know me at all on Instagram, I finish all of my work on wood panel and then I take it to the next level and add a layer of glass like resin finish to my work. So I will leave links to a couple of those videos if you wanna know how to actually mount the, this paper to uh, wood panel. I have a video on that as well as how to achieve a nice resin finish. I'll leave that link also to the video. Well, thanks so much for watching today's video on ebrew marbling. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for future art videos. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you again soon.